Kim here with Little Biz Resources, and today let's look at Pinterest's new feature of connecting your Instagram account to your Pinterest account. Now, there are some pros and cons to this, so let's dive in. First of all, it's very, very easy to connect your Instagram account to your Pinterest account, right? So I'm in Pinterest right now. I'm going to go to my profile. I'm going to click this edit profile. And then here you can see that this is kind of like your settings of everything, right? So we are going to go to claimed accounts and you can see I already have one here claimed. All you need to do is make sure you're logged into another tab on the same browser and then log into to Instagram. Make sure you're, you're already logged in so that way you can then authenticate from here. Now, it doesn't say anything specific about you needing to have a business Instagram account, but traditionally Instagram has required that in order to connect to it. So if you have a private Instagram and it's not letting you do that, you may need to, to look at creating a business account, but there's no instructions here. So who knows? I have it connected. I'm not going to unclaim it or anything, but once it's claimed, you can then decide where you want to publish it. Now you don't have to, you can, you can turn off auto publish. So every time I post on Instagram, it'll automatically publish into wherever I tell it to here. So I actually created a board shared from Instagram and I connected it. So it's there. Now there are again, some pros and cons to this. So great. It's automated. That's excellent. But the first thing is I go, Hmm, this is interesting because most of these social media platforms, all of the social media platforms, they do things to keep people on their platform, right? So Facebook and Instagram and all these, they're notorious for restricting access simply because they want more people on their platform. And in fact, you know, places like YouTube allegedly penalize you for having links. Facebook, same thing, supposedly penalize you for having links, that lead off of their platform. So the fact that Pinterest is allowing the connection and auto pinning to your boards is interesting to me. I suspect they're trying to target a specific audience with this and that's great. But if you don't want to auto publish, you just click this right here and it'll stop auto publishing. But anything that publishes during that time, it will not post then. But that's, that's what it says here. All right. So let's look at some other cons first, and then we'll talk about the pros. So the first thing is that a lot of people don't realize that Pinterest has some limits. They have limits for pins, boards, and follows. Now, if you're, the connection is not that big of a deal. If you're creating an extra board and you don't have 2000 boards, it's not a big deal. You may have to use an existing board. If you have 2000 boards, if you have a lot of pins, this is going to be a problem. Okay. And this is a big thing for people who post on Instagram, like 15 times a day right? I mean, calculate that out. If it's 15 times a day, every 10 days, you're adding 150 pins. And if you already have a lot of pins, then you're going to run out of space. You may end up going, you know what? I think I'm going to have to have a completely different Pinterest account in order to have an Instagram strategy on Pinterest. So that's, you have to run the numbers and see if that's going to work for you. And the way you find out, if you go back to your profile again, and you go into saved, you can see all pins. I have 30,652. You will notice though, this includes group boards and I have some pretty big group boards in here that are not my boards. They're just boards that I've joined. And I have one in here that has like over a million pins. So the, that total like, this is 125,582 pins in this social media one. That's clearly, obviously if I only have 30,000, it's not counting everybody else's pins that contribute just my pins. So don't worry if you're on a bunch of group boards, like this one's 530,000. Here you go. 1.8 million pins. Okay. So these are obviously not counting everybody else's. So don't worry about your group boards. Your total pins are going to be when you come up to your first one, all pins, that's your number. So I'm only at 30,000. I'm actually going to, de I, I delete some too. If you want to delete some, you can go into a specific pin. Let's go into, um, Let's go into, that's not mine. That's, I'm trying to go into a personal one real quick because I don't want to go delete, try to delete somebody else's. These look, these are all group ones. Most of the stuff I'm in is group, group boards. Um, how about this one looks like this one is mine. Yeah. Okay. So we were testing something on this one. So that's why I have five pins. So let's say that I'm going to delete this one. 
right? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to these three buttons right here. I'm going to say edit pin and I'm going to say delete. That's how you delete a pin. Now, if you're like, hey, you know what? I need to delete a lot of pins. You want to delete an entire board then. So we're going to go back to the profile page on the saved section right here. And I'm going to actually go to that entire board and I'm going to click right here and I'm going to say delete board. And then they tell you they'll keep it for seven days if you want to restore it. I'm not worried about it. That board's nothing to me. So that's how you delete a board. That's how you delete pins if you need to clean it up. And then your numbers will change. I think that already changed. Because so there's like four pins. So, oh no, 651 now. Okay. So 30,651. All right. So now let's talk about strategy just real quick. Okay. If you have an active Instagram account or, and you're, tr and you're trying to build it more, then you may want to test this, test the automation, see if it works. The one thing I've noticed when I connected mine and then I was like testing to see how it would work, they don't translate exactly. So like the image size doesn't translate exactly over to Pinterest, which means that you either need to create the images on Instagram considering Pinterest or not care. And I would argue that you need, if you have an Instagram strategy, you need to focus on Instagram. And then is it a benefit to auto generate the pins on Pinterest if they don't come over correctly, right? If they don't look good, like if you have text on it, it's not going to look right. So you have to weigh your pros and cons there. You may want to test it out for a little while. You can always delete the board later, right? And delete those pins. If they're like, Oh, they're not producing at all, then just delete it and disconnect. But there's always some value in testing it out. And if you have an Instagram strategy or you want to have an Instagram strategy, it looks like Pinterest is saying, hey, us and Instagram, we are connected. And that's a good point, right? The, the people on Instagram are looking for images and videos. Pinterest is basically a bookmarking site for images and videos, right? So you can use the same audience and, and it would be beneficial to say, Hey, people on Pinterest probably also like Instagram. So if they come across your pin and they're going to go to Instagram, it makes sense to them. The problem is, is if you're in like e-commerce or something else, now you're adding another step to get to your product, right? So it, you have to weigh the pros and cons. I would test it out. I'm going to test it out. I don't do a whole lot in Instagram, so it's not like a huge test for me, but I think it's worth giving it a try. So that is the new feature from Pinterest. And that is another way to help automate some pins to Pinterest. Again, you have your maximum. So I would consider that you can always delete stuff later and um, let me know if you have any questions and you can hop into the Facebook group and we can talk about this too. Thanks.